Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, as we know, recently I had this brilliant idea to add not one, but two superchargers to the four liter inline six powered W203. Calling this a brilliant idea might be a bit of an overstatement because I don't really know if it'll work. Nonetheless, I'm not gonna let that stop me. We need to keep positive vibes. I'm gonna give it a try. Hopefully after this video, you guys can see why I think this is gonna work. Now, in the previous video I made on this whole idea, I made this bracket. Now, this is ugly and everything, but I just wanted to have something to bolt the supercharger on because they are kind of heavy and uncomfortable to work with. So, I bolt this to hold the first supercharger in place. Now, this one had the supercharger at a slight angle, like with the oil filter. By the way, look at that oil filter all scratched up but if you've ever bought anything custom like this you know you install reinstall reinstall the parts like a million times to figure out exactly where everything needs to go but anyway that was just to figure out if the two superchargers will fit next to the engine in this area and i'm happy to report that they do fit but since then the plans have slightly changed a bit so let's step on over to the workshop and i'll update you guys Welcome to the workshop. As you can see behind me, we have a lot of things going on. But let's quickly talk about these compressors as it's referred to by Mercedes, or it's also called a supercharger, or for the American people, a blower. Some even call it a hot air pump. Now, the W203 came with two different engines. The first generation came with the M111 engine. That's basically very much the same as the M104. The M104 is just a six cylinder. The M111 is the four cylinder. Now that came with a different supercharger. This supercharger, the Eaton M, I forgot the number. I'll put it on the screen over here. But this Eaton supercharger came with the second generation engine, which is the M271 code engine. Now, the reason I'm going with two superchargers is this supercharger is made for a 1.8 liter engine and I'm afraid that it won't be able to flow enough air, create boost for the 4 liter that I have in that W203 now. I think an easy fix for that is let's just add two superchargers. Problem solved. So like I said, I bought this first bracket just to start mocking everything up. So I had the one supercharger just like that and it had the same angle as to not heat the oil filter and then the next supercharger would have been level with the engine since then i actually spent two days building a second bracket now with this bracket i had the first supercharger level with the engine and then the second supercharger will be at a slight angle just to add some room between the two superchargers for me to get the boost pipes out of it so i'll have to build some kind of collector over here the throttle body will be connected on this side and then this will be the boost side or the positive pressure side and then that i need to build some kind of collector get that into boost pipes and then through the intercooler and everything like that now the reason i built this flimsy thing obviously i can't use that for a bracket because there's going to be a lot of tension on the pulley and this won't work but with this, I recently teamed up with a new company that'll be a game changer when it comes to brackets. So, I introduce to you guys Precision Plasma. This saved me so much time and effort. I mean, I don't even know if I can cut this myself. I mean, maybe I can, but the precision in this is definitely next level. So recreating that by hand is damn near impossible. That's why I built this bracket. So we had something to measure, put that data into the computer, transfer it over to the CNC machine, and we can cut out this. Again, going with CNC cut parts, is much more accurate and 
it just looks way better. Really stoked on that and really stoked to have them aboard. Let me go ahead and throw this on the car and I'll show you guys how it sits in there and then we'll build from there. There we go, bracket is on there, bolted down with five bolts onto the engine block. So that is where the AC compressor used to bolt onto. So that is not going anywhere, especially once I get it all welded up. But let's get one supercharger on there. So I am using the existing mounting points and then I also bolt this little tube for the one mounting point at the back. That just slides in over there and bolts up. First supercharger mounted solid, ready to go. Now just to show you guys how easy this would have been if I only added one supercharger. So using the existing belt that I do have, we can actually My work here is done, but oh no, nothing comes easy. I want two superchargers, so that makes things uh, a lot more difficult. Then on the second supercharger, I already got started on this little collector box. Let's throw that on there and I'll show you how that looks. The first supercharger is mounted and exactly where it needs to be in line with everything. And then using that collector box, the second supercharger is also where it needs to be. Now, obviously I'm gonna have to get a longer belt. Now, before I can figure that out, I do also want to add another pulley over here somewhere so that the belt goes around this one and then around the idler pulley up to the second supercharger and then back over to the power steering pump. Now, the reason for that is to have as much as possible of the belt around this supercharger pulley. The bigger the surface of the belt on the supercharger pulley, the less likely it is to slip. And once I figure out exactly how and where I'm gonna mount that idler pulley, we can figure out what length belt we'll be needing, and then that will be sorted. Might also need to change up the angle of this radiator hose. It's gonna be somewhere over there, and then next to it over here, I need to come through with the first boost pipe. So that'll be the collector. And then from that, this way to the front of the car, we need to get started on the boost pipes. Like I said, from over here, we'll have the boost pipes coming out. I'm still deciding if we wanna get a A to air intercooler in there. That'll be the easiest um, because I do definitely want an intercooler because as we know, the supercharger does create a lot of heat. So intercooler i've also thought about adding uh, water to air but that's going to be a bit more difficult number one i can't put it in front of the existing radiator because we already have a bit of an overheating issue so when the car's standing still it does tend to get a bit toasty but once you get up and moving it does seem to do okay i can put the water to air inside the car but that's going to be a nightmare getting all the plumbing to and from that for now, just taking this one step at a time, figuring it out as I go, but let's finish up that collector and bolt from there. Now, ideally, I probably should have used some aluminium to bolt this collector with, but I think because of its odd shape and weird angles, that would have been way more difficult to get welded up and more importantly, airtight. Plus, I already got started with this mild seal box, so let's just continue with that. I got a few measurements because the next thing I had to figure out was how I'm going to get this collector sealed up and then run into a 76 millimeter tube which will later then connect to the intercooler. First, I wanted to go with 63 millimeters because I have a lot of these silicone hoses that I could have reused. But as they say, bigger is better. If I can squeeze a 76 mil tube onto that, I think that will be ideal. Next up was cutting the holes for the two superchargers to blow into the collector. Now that we have both holes for the superchargers to blow into the collector cut out, we can move on to that 76 mil exit.
Luckily, I still had a piece of 76 mil tube laying around from some or other exhaust that I built, so I'll just cut a piece of that. I have this first piece cut out at a 30 degree angle to start pointing the boost in the right direction. It's all about the flow, having as little restriction as possible. Now, again, because of this collector's weird shape, it was kind of difficult to get a round tube to fit onto that. But nothing a hammer can't fix. I spent about 30 minutes getting it to the shape that I'm happy with. Then I could go ahead and get that tack welded on and then finally get it fully welded up. Final step was adding a few pie cuts again to start pointing the boost in the direction I wanted to go. And just like that, we have a custom two into one collector. So this is what I ended up with. Now, just to kind of explain why I did things the way I did, uh, we have to look at the original design. And luckily for me, this bulky piece is removable and it's fairly simple to bolt something new from here using the existing bolt holes and everything like that. But the reason why this is so bulky is because when you look inside over there, there's like a giant baffle like a plastic thing with a lot of holes and chambers. The reason I'm showing you guys this is because of this V-shape in the supercharger as well as this piece. As we know, the air goes in over here and then magically creates boost. Have this piece on and you look in there, it kind of makes like a tunnel that goes bigger. Now there was no way I would get these big bulky collectors in there in any way, so I made this. Now looking at my design, Again, the air wants to go this way, so that's why I used the 76 mm tube over here to have it as big as possible. Just do my best to make this flow as best as I possibly can and then get the boost in the direction I want it to go. Then from here, it'll go down and around into the intercooler and then again, we'll figure everything out from there. That is how it looks all put together. Now you might be wondering why I have a bolt in over here. Well, that is for testing purposes. So another interesting fact is I measured out the crank pulley and then I measured out one of the supercharger pulleys and it turns out these supercharger pulleys are 2.7 times smaller than the crank pulley. That means for every one rotation the crank does, one RPM, this will turn almost three times faster. So I have a drill over here. So this drill goes up to 3000 RPM. So that will basically be like as if the car was standing there idling at around 1000 RPM. So just to show you guys the airflow on camera, because how else are you gonna know there is in fact airflow? I made this little thingy. Nice. Let's see if it flows in the air. And that's only one supercharger. I don't have any way to spin the both of them up. But it's flowing some air just on idling. And then also when I remove this, spin it up again and then close this hole, look what happens. Still hard to say if I'm a genius or an idiot. Now, before I go ahead and get this fully welded up and add some supporting brackets for the top supercharger, the next thing I wanna get sorted out is this idler pulley. So just imagine for a sec, the crank pulley is over here. The belt is gonna go from there around the bottom supercharger pulley and then over this idler pulley and then up to the top supercharger and back to the power steering pump in this area. So I'm going to make a mounting point for this pulley with its little shaft. I also want some adjustability on this pulley because that'll just make it easier once I go ahead and buy the new belt.
Well, folks, unfortunately, that's about as far as I'm going to get for this week's video. I got everything back on the car just to see how it looks and also to get the thumbnail for this video. Talk about a tight squeeze. So I forgot about this, actually, but it seems like we'll be fine with the clearance over there. And then, yeah, like I said, running out of time. For me to finish up this pulley, I need to get it on a lathe, get everything drilled and tapped. I don't have the tools for that, so I'm going to need to phone a friend for that. But it's Friday afternoon, getting pretty late, and I'm not going to run around like a headless chicken to get that sorted out. We'll just continue with this next week. To be honest, I was really pushing this week to get the new belt or at least a measurement for the new belt and get that on there. Because once we get the belt on there, the superchargers will be mounted. And I think that is the most difficult part out of the way. Progress is progress. And I did get a lot done this week. Like I said, I think this is the most time consuming part of it all. Once we are done mounting it, well, we are pretty much done. I just need to get that belt and then we can uh, finish up this idler pulley then that should be ready to go from there we'll just need to build the boost pipes into the intercooler and then around and well i do still need to build a new intake manifold nothing i haven't done before but like always i appreciate you guys watching the video hope you guys enjoyed and then i'll see you in the next one peace out mm -hmm.